This is DC News Now. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Annalisa Gale on this Monday, filling in for Mark Hall this afternoon. Meteorologist Damon Matson is joining us with the latest check on your forecast. Now, Damon, coming out of Mother's Day, yesterday was actually quite pleasant. Yeah, we got some sunshine, some breaks after what was a an unsettled weekend to start out. We had all of that rainfall, those stronger storms even that rolled through Friday and Saturday. We caught a little bit of a break yesterday, and now things are improving even more today. There's a look. Rainfall total totals weren't all that impressive as a lot of those showers and storms were very scattered with most locations staying under a half an inch. But notice these pockets of green mixed in on occasion here. Those were some of those heavier rainfall totals from those storms that rolled by again late Saturday going into Saturday night. But today there is not even a worry about a passing shower. We have totally sunny skies and it's going to turn out to be a fantastic rest of your Monday as not only do we get to keep the sunshine around, we stay dry, but we're actually going to bump up those temperatures a little bit as well. By later on this afternoon, we're talking upper 70s, lower 80s with lower humidity values as well. So it will remain comfortable as we go throughout the entire day today. So we should soak this up because unfortunately the unsettled pattern that was with us through the weekend, it is set to continue as we head deeper into this week. When should we expect the return of some showers and potentially Potentially some pockets of heavier rainfall. We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thanks so much. What's happening today? DC families and teachers are rallying against budget cuts to early childhood programs. That rally started minutes ago in front of the mayor's office. DC News Now's Yama Risa Say has the latest. Yeah, well, Freedom Plaza has turned into a kid's zone, and it's all part of a rally for National Day Without Child Care. Now, early educators say that by showing up in numbers, they hope the $300 million proposed budget cut for early childhood education can be reversed. And restore the dollar. DC families, early child care teachers, and staff stood in front of the Wilson building demanding Mayor Bowser not make any cuts to early childhood education. The proposed 2025 budget not only includes that nearly $300 million cut, it also proposes to cut funding to the pay equity fund, which ensures early childhood educators are paid almost the same as DC public school teachers. Most of the times that I've been doing is I'm paying from pocket, and now with the equity fund, it has helped me provide for staff needs. We would face the consequences of losing staff who are from losing staff to daycare centers who are offering more than $17.50 an hour. In honor of National Day Without Child Care, Monday's rally was a little different. Families are here, the children are here to show solidarity that, hey, learning begins in early childhood and we are not going to stop. Please do not cut the equity fund. Organizers say they want to send a clear message by showing up in numbers while still having fun. Organizers say this will be the largest national day without child care to date, with 26 different states participating. The goal? To spot the true cost of child care and demand funding needed for child care systems to allow everyone to thrive. People just trying to make it day by day. I, I really think they should really think about it before they really settle on. Now, early childhood educators are scheduled to speak to council members soon, and we did reach out to the mayor's office for a comment, but we didn't get a response back just yet. For now, reporting in Northwest D.C., I'm Yamar Sasei, D.C. News Now. All right, Yamari, thanks so much. Well, demolition to remove parts of the Baltimore Key Bridge is expected to begin today after yesterday's inclement weather postponed the scheduled work. Now, officials say crews have been preparing for weeks to use explosives to break down the steel structure of that bridge that collapsed. It is estimated to be 500 feet long, weighing over a million pounds. A destination is reportedly going to take place tonight. In an update today, Governor Westmore detailing the process they will use to remove the metal there. At 5 p.m., weather permitting, Unified Command will deploy the use of precision cutting to clear the wreckage on top of the dolly. We discussed these precision cuts during our last press conference, and the strategy we will use on the key bridge wreckage was used to remove and replace the Harry Nice Bridge in Charles County. So there is precedent, and this is a best practice. 
Officials are also hoping to reopen the main channel by the end of the month. Well, Virginia lawmakers are expected to meet today after agreeing to a new budget deal. This comes more than three weeks after they decided to start the negotiation process over. If approved, the new budget would fund the state for two years starting on July 1st. It includes a 3% pay raise for teachers and state employees. However, the budget does not include a sales tax on digital goods like streaming services or require Virginia to rejoin the greenhouse gas initiative. It also includes, does not include rather, language to legalize skill games. The governor still has a skills games piece of legislation before him that he has not acted upon. And it's incumbent upon the governor to act upon that legislation. He has to make decision on if he's going to veto it or he's going to pass the legislation. He has legislation before him. Lawmakers are expected to return to Richmond to approve the new budget today. It will then head to Governor Yunkin for his signature. Meanwhile, in our schools, DC leaders are discussing student absenteeism today. They say nearly half of students were chronically absent in the first school year since returning to in-person learning. Leaders are discussing four bills at today's meeting. The first would require schools to publish absenteeism data on a monthly basis instead of once per year. Another would use more funding to help students who are chronically absent. Absent. The last two bills focus on attendance interventions. They would make the Department of Human Services responsible for the interventions instead of the Child and Family Services Agency. They also lower the number of absences required. D.C. Mayor Miro Bowser, meanwhile, cutting the ribbon on the Anacostia Safe Commercial Corridor hub today. It's the second hub in the city as part of the mayor's plan to address public safety. The first location opened in Chinatown in February. The mayor's office says these safe commercial corridor hubs support the community by connecting people in the city to city services, working across multiple government agencies and responding to challenges in real time. Also developing this afternoon, a 12 year old boy is recovering after police say he accidentally shot himself on Mother's Day. Now officers are trying to figure out how he got a hold of that gun in the first place. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is in the community with reaction. This is now the second Mother's Day in a row in which a child was involved in a shooting. MPD behind me here is investigating and all of this happened just around the corner from last year's shooting. Metropolitan police say the young boy accidentally fired the gun and injured himself. The shooting happened in the 3600 block of J Street on Sunday afternoon. Crews rushed the boy to the hospital. He was conscious and breathing with non-life threatening injuries. Now the big question remains about how the boy got the gun and whether any of his family members will face any charges. This shooting comes a year after another child. 10 year old Ariana Davis was struck by gunfire last month. Thursday. Bullock struck her when she was riding in her family's car through Hayes Street, just one block over from where the boys shooting happened. Both shootings in the Mayfair neighborhood on days that were supposed to be times for celebration. And that's not all. Just the night before, officers responded to another shooting on 47th Place Northeast involving a teenager who accidentally discharged a gun and injured himself. Parents needed pay more attention to their children. Um, we need to be living in a city where it's in an uproar right now. They need to monitor the children more. They need to pay attention to their children, need to talk to their children, find out what's on their mind. Now, the Northeast D.C. community has been marked with violence recently. Back in February, just up the street in the same neighborhood, three blocks north of J Street, police also found the bodies of three shooting victims, and they're still searching for the suspects in that shooting. For now, in Northeast D.C., Liberty Zabala, D.C. News Now. Liberty, thank you. Meanwhile, in Maryland, police are still looking for a man responsible for shooting and killing a man at the MGM Resort and Casino in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Police say it happened in the parking garage on Saturday morning. They say the man died at the scene. Investigators believe that shooting began following an argument. It's pretty, um, pretty sad, you know? It's shocking. I don't see stuff like this all the time, so it's not just another day for me, but um, it is a little bit more shocking than anything else. Again, so far, no arrests have been made in that case. Well, car thefts are on the rise in Prince William County, Virginia, and locals say it's a huge problem and only getting worse. Our Northern Virginia reporter Max Marcilla looks at some of the reasons behind that uptick. Not all car thefts are like this one, but the one that happened at Michigan Auto Group in Woodbridge last year is certainly not unique. Broke into the dealership, broke into the office, 
stole the keys, went out there and stole four high-end cars. Those were four cars, but hundreds have been taken in Prince William County in recent years. New crime data shows motor vehicle thefts, combined attempted and successful, increased by 55% from 2022 to 2023. The numbers are even higher so far in 2024. As far as why this problem has gotten worse, police say there's a number of different explanations. The first is simply an increase in crimes of opportunity. The numbers of people who leave their keys in the car, whether they're pumping gas or delivering food or just trying to keep the heat or the air conditioning on. Then there's another problem, police say. There is that influence of social media, specifically on teenagers. But at the end of the day, if they want to take the car, they'll take it. A TikTok trend showing people how to start and steal a car is a major problem. Seeing youth using them as joyriding. Other times, police say the cars or parts are sold, but police warn stolen cars can lead to danger and sometimes a more violent crime. This is the scene last June when a man who stole a car allegedly used it in an attempt to run over an officer. The then 18 year old suspect now facing an attempted aggravated murder charge. It's unclear how he stole the car. We continue to kind of push education to, to vehicle owners uh, specifically about making sure that they keep their doors locked. Police are working on the problem through that education and events giving out steering wheel locks. Ahmad Rahim tells us it falls on manufacturers too. They hooked up a computer to the OBD port and they literally just drove away with the car in two minutes. A $60,000 car, so I mean, it's got to be the manufacturer. It can't be anybody else. Reporting in Woodbridge, Max Marcella, DC News Now. All right, well, in Prince George's County, the Surratt's Clinton Branch Library will temporarily close starting today. That library will be closed all of this week for building maintenance. The county's library systems expects the branch to reopen next Monday.